Hello and welcome to episode two of the Mukunu Moments first season. I'm Michael and with me is Kelly. Hi. And Tyler. And today we will take you deeper into Mukunu CMS and show you how to make the most of the main features in Premiere. We're going to go in depth on how to use Mukunu CMS as a curation management system for your cultural content. It's all about the C's today. Communities, cultural protocols, categories, content we fondly call digital heritage and collections brought together into a single curation management system. And after some brief housekeeping announcements and introductions, we will dive deeply into all of this to help you get set up step by step. So we're planning to do these webinars and trainings about every two weeks throughout the fall, and we're already planning a, ne a next season in the spring. The full schedule is now available at premier.mukadu.org slash webinars, and now that's an opportunity for me to show you a new feature we've worked we're, we've worked out right within Mukadu. The trainings are available here. You can simply click on one and even find it in your own time zone to sign up for future um, episodes, which is pretty cool. We'll cover that again in a little bit later. So first, uh, just a quick shout out to our to the sponsors and funders who have helped um, bring Mukadu to life and the development teams that are, are helping us uh, to make Mukadu um, currently uh, 2.0. A special shout out to Canopy Studios. Uh, some of their, uh, the members of Canopy are actually on the call with us today, which is fantastic, helping us to bring it to Mukadu 2.0 by the end of the year. And of course, uh, we'd like to acknowledge everyone around the world, the organizations um, and people who have been helping with the active development efforts and funding and volunteerism and general goodwill towards this grassroots effort. So thank you very much. The community continues to grow and we're tremendously grateful. Okay, so today we're gonna spend a little bit more time on housekeeping. The first thing we wanna say is that the session is being recorded so that we can share it with um, the world. And we um, also uh, would like to say that if you have any questions at any time, by all means, just put them in the chat box here in your GoToMeeting, um, as Tyler has done for us. And uh, we will he will be tracking all that for us. You can also tweet if you are a tweet type person to Team Coda. Um, you can also raise your hand. There's a hand function. Um, I think Tyler will download that for us in a minute. Um, you'll see there's a little hand uh, function. Uh, this is where the, where we are the presenters. But anyway, there's a hand function. You can raise your hand by all means. We will try to answer your questions. So don't be shy. And there's a lot of us on the call today. There's actually there's 14 currently. We're expecting about 17 or 18 people. So it's a we're really excited. Um, but we want to do our, do our best to get to everybody. And this will be a very interactive experience. This will be an, an interesting experience for us, uh, an experiment. We really want to focus on learning by doing. So to begin, we would like to launch a poll. And the poll is basically what we'd like to know is, is how we can help you get the most out of Mukudu CMS. Um, and so if you can just take a moment now or any time in the next uh, uh, few minutes to just select one of these. Are you, are you looking for help in getting started? adding communities, cultural protocols, categories, or adding digital content. And by all means, we will uh, we'll do our best to accommodate. Okay, so our agenda today is to focus on, um, on learning by doing and really trying to get into, as we're calling it, the six C's of Mukadu CMS. Um, so we'll be diving into that in just a, 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 little bit of a, a little bit here. Then it'll be your turn and we'll be guiding you through, Kelly will be guiding you through actually adding what will wind up being about 15 new items to Premiere together. We've uh, prepared this content so that um, we have some very nice high quality images as well as the metadata that goes with them. And then together we'll be building out a digital heritage uh, collection item, which will be new for some of you. And for those of you that have been adding content, then we're, we're looking for you to help, you know, drive this together so that we can all see, you know, what, um, what it really looks like to be doing this as a community. So that will be a really kind of fun and exciting thing. So please do, uh, do contribute there as much as you can. So out outcomes today include familiarizing by, by doing uh, as we will be doing together and taking a look at the six C's as we're calling them that are in fact not unique to Mukadu, 
but really are about good practice in archive and stewardship. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the types of content that you can be adding now and what can be added later once uh, Mukadoo 2.0 ships uh, at the end of the year or in early January. And then finally, where to go from here. And with that, I'd like to talk a bit about our current work. Current work right now that is fully, <laughs> we are fully immersed in trying to, to develop Mukadoo 2.0. What we really are focusing on uh, principally on trying to, to, to bring Mukadoo 2.0 based on the most sought after features of which um, a, the one click install, the ability to just um, fill out a, an easy form and have the software running. Um, secondly, fully open source software released through GitHub that will be downloadable and accessible also at Drupal.org. A, a redefined and refined access protocol and content management system, um, a truly archival media management workflow, and a much deeper integration of Mukudu Mobile. So these are the features we're looking at with Mukudu 2.0. Um, we're expecting to have this out um, in the beginning of 2015. And we could really use your help throughout this process. You could help by commenting and contributing, um, by, by actively engaging with us, and we will have a, an active testing um, phase uh, towards the latter part of the fall. And we'd also like to be hearing from you. Um, great. Uh, we'd, like to act actively, we'd like to be hearing from you and to help plan for your future as well as the future of the software. So with that, are there any um, questions about Mukadi 2.0? Do, I do see we have a question from, um, from Helen Stanford Windy Boy about if we add content to the Premiere site, will it stay or at some point will, will it be gone? Uh, the way we're working with Premiere is that if content is added to Premiere, uh, we, we do preserve it. And if we make massive changes to Premiere as we did recently, um, we make sure that that content is, is saved even if we wind up refreshing the site itself. Um, but the idea that is Premiere is a, is a quote, play site. It's a place where we're all going to be playing with content together. Um, but if you've done some hard work on that, by all means, we want to make sure that it doesn't get lost. So. For sure, we'll uh, we'll save that for you. So thank you for that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Kelly, who's going to take us through the the six C's, as it were, of Mukadi CMS. And then we'll have some, and we're doing great on time. Uh, then we're going to uh, have the opportunity for you to be working on this together with us as we build and add new content, and we expect that there'll be. Uh, questions along the way, and we'll do our very best to get to those. So with that, I'll hand it over to Kelly. Hi, guys. I'm so happy to be here today, um, <laughs> truly. Uh, so yes, we're going to go in depth on how to use Mukadu CMS, um, and it, it is all about the six Cs. Um, the six Cs are communities coming together with cultural protocols to decide on how their content is shared and with whom it is shared with, um, and categories. So those three, the communities, the cultural protocols, and the categories are going to be the building blocks upon which we curate our content and eventually build collections. Um, so let's dive into premier.mukadu.org. Okay. All right, so here we are at the premier.mukadu.org site. Um, I know a lot of you have logins to this site. So if you have a login, you can go ahead and log in using um, your personal username and password. If there's those of us who don't have logins to the site at this time, you can use demo, password, demo. And that's the quickest way for us to log into the site if you don't have a password at this time. Um, if you'd like to join Premiere and get a password, you can always go to the home screen and click on Join Premiere. Um, and filling out this form will let us give you a, um, a Premiere login, and you can also select 
what your login will be. Um, when you subscribe to the list, um, you'll just have to quickly confirm that you're a person and not a robot, and then we'll get back to you as soon as possible with a login and password. Okay, so now that I'm logged in as a demo user, um, we're going to start adding content together later on in this series or in this episode um, from our source spreadsheet. And um, I believe you all have a link to this. This is a source spreadsheet of content that we've staged to go into Mukuru CMS. Um, so when we start adding digital heritage items, um, there's a number of metadata that you can add that are optional. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, there's these there's these six C's um, and the three building blocks are communities, cultural protocols, and categories. So before we start adding our digital heritage items, we have to set up the communities, the cultural protocols, and the categories that we're going to be working with. So I'm going to go back to the Premier site. And um, when you look at premier.mukudu.org, um, you have in order communities, cultural protocols, and categories. So the first question I'm going to answer is the community question. Who is this content for or about? And so I'll click on create community and add a community name. Now the demo content that we have is um, all content that was created in a class and the rights are held by um, the Center for Digital Archaeology. It was a class in spring 2011 at the UC Berkeley campus and the students all agreed um, to contribute their content for use in trainings and seminars like we have now. So I'm going to add a community called the Center for Digital Archaeology. And when I work with communities, a lot of times, unless it's a very strict community, I recommend that we keep the sharing protocol to open um, so that if you choose to make any content that you're posting, um, open and available, you still have the community to attribute to that content to. So we're going to set this community to open right now. And I'm going to select an image for this community, which I've already uploaded the image, so I'm just going to go to my library. And here we go. And I'll save that here. Okay, um, and the next question we want to answer, so we've answered the who, who is this content for or about, and now we're going to answer the how, and the how um, is the cultural protocol. Um, when I go to add a cultural protocol, it looks very similar to adding a community. And that's because we wanted to make it as flexible as possible. Um, all communities and cultural protocols have a sharing protocol so that you can select how that content is shared. Now, since the, um, the class all decided that this content could be shared with the public as long as there was a Creative Commons license on it, and we're going to make this cultural protocol called public. OK, and the sharing protocol, again, is going to be open. Um, we also have a couple other options. Um, there's a protocol for community, and that will make the um, sharing only within your, your community or any community listed on that item, uh, community or protocol listed on that item. And there's also a sharing protocol for a strict community. And when you add a, uh, a community, which is a strict community, um, if you've added more um, protocols and communities on that item, um, it will only share that community with the strict community. So by selecting strict community, you're saying, I always only want this, this, the content shared with this community. So open is completely open. Community is a little bit more flexible. It's mostly shared within your community unless you add a different cultural protocol or community then it's shared with those other communities. And strict community means, okay, even if I add these other uh, communities or protocols to the item, I, I really, really always want it shared with a strict community. Um, and quickly, is there anyone that would like to share a moment when they've 
this is a question for some of our more experienced users. Is there any example that anyone else has on when they've used a community or strict community? Does anyone want to volunteer and raise their hand? Nope, that's okay. Um, I can share one. Um, so I was working um, with my family a few days ago, and we were creating some digital heritage. I was showing them around Mukudu, and we were creating some digital heritage items. And um, some of the items were images of my niece and nephew that we didn't really want to have shared with um, the entire world. So we put a strict community um, protocol on that item because it was really a private moment with my family and um, we didn't really want it shared with the public. Do we have a comment? Yeah, Helen Helen mentions, um, and now, now we have a couple rolling in, which is fantastic. So Helen is mentioning uh, culturally sensitive material related to uh, ceremonies or societies would be a good example of content that you'd want to have um, more strictly uh, managed. And then we have Craig Dietrich, who worked on the Plato People's Web Portal as an example of community, three First Nation groups, created their protocols um, as it was the early version of Mukadu, which is, yes, Craig yeah. was one of us. So that's, that's a great, that's a, another great example. Plato People's is a really great example because through the process of having those protocols that managed uh, differential access over time, um, we've, we've pulled the content and over 90% of the content is completely open, but it took a process of, of many, many years to get that, which is fantastic. Yeah. And sometimes when you're working with large communities and you're not sure um, what the decision um, is for the entire community um, and you want to make sure that everyone's okay with sharing that, you can set the protocol to strict and then um, open it up to either community or open as time progresses, as everyone kind of gets to see the content and be more open to sharing the content with other communities within the system. Okay, I'm just gonna save this item. So we've gone over the communities who are the who of Mukadu, and we've gone through um, the cultural protocols, which are how of Mukadu. So how do we want this shared within our communities? Um, and cultural protocols are required on every single digital heritage item, and I highly recommend communities as well because uh, if you're working on either community outreach or you just want things to be attributed back to your community, that's a great way to do that. Um, if at any time you want to view any of these communities, um, the communities that are open for you to access, um, you can go to the Communities tab and see all of the communities that are open within the site. So the communities that we're going to be working with today are the Center for Digital Archaeology community and the Mukadu Moments community. Um, and on our digital heritage items, we're also going to be adding the public um, tag. Um, and this is for the digital heritage items that we have um, made available for the Premier webinar um, users to work with. So if you're working with your own content today and you want it to be within your own community or cultural protocol, please feel free to do that. This is more of a learning session. And um, I just wanted to make sure that all of our items, um, we had the, f the foundation blocks. So we've added the communities, um, we've added the cultural protocols, and now we're going to go through and add the categories that we're going to be using. And categories are really great um, taxonomy that we can help people. Um, it's all about creation, uh, curation. So creating a finite list of categories with your website is a really great way to help people browse and um, search within your content. So we have a, a set of categories that we already have listed. And as we see, photography is there. And today we're going to be working with the micro histories. Um, and those were the projects that the students were doing in spring 2011. So I'm going to add this high level um, category of micro history. And um, I'm going to add a description later of what exactly a microhistory means, but we can go ahead and save that so we can use it now. 
And then one last thing is I'm going to add a digital heritage item. So I'm going to click here and press add digital heritage item. Now from the screen, it's very similar to filling out a form. We have a number of different um, required fields and the required fields would be a title, uh, a cultural protocol and a category like we've already thought through some of those things. Um, but you have the opportunity to really make this a rich piece of content. And um, some of the other options that we have are keywords, um, any metadata fields, uh, creator, contributor, date. If you need help with any of these fields, there's help text um, for, for filling in these fields right underneath the metadata. And um, there's traditional knowledge and cultural heritage. And we could really get into every single one of these items. And if anyone has a question on how to fill out any of these standard metadata items, I'm very happy to answer those for you. Do you have any questions at this time? We have a couple. One, uh, Richard, Richard, Richard's asking about if a category um, already exists, what happens? And I think currently, if you if a category already exists, it just creates it. Just then you get two of the same. I think that's how it is right now. Um, I think it's on our list of things we want to solve. Yeah. So uh, currently, if a category exists. Um, and you try to add a new one, it will give you a conflict, um, I believe. I want to, I can test that right now if Just you want to. Yeah, um, but sometimes we add a category a second time and maybe um, it doesn't know the difference between capitalization. So if I added architecture and dwellings and everything was uh, lowercase, then it would create a new category. Um, but let me see what it does if I add in exactly the same category. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's on that's on the, the short bucket list of things we want to fix. <laughs> so now we have two categories for architecture and dwellings. They may look the same, but they're slightly different. <laughs> Uh, and then, um, so so thanks for that. And then uh, uh, Craig asked about how did we decide about the metadata fields and are they based on DC, which is uh, Dublin Core, or something more arbitrary? And that's that's a great question. Let's 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 hold that just for a little bit longer, so we can talk about how we came up with uh, what we call Mukadu Core versus uh, Mukadu Extended. So we'll, we'll we'll talk about that. But it's a it's been a, it's been a, it's been an interesting and fun journey. So um, oh, look, articles and articles. See, other people are adding categories. That's good. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's the curation process, even of your own categories. That yeah, we need to manage. And the curation happens through the admin of um, of the site. So, since I'm logged in as demo, I can't go in and pull out the categories. Um, but if you're a site owner and you'd like to learn how to clean up your categories, please let me know and. Um, I'm happy to write um, a, a quick help article on that or walk you through it in person. Um, and if we have time at the end of this webinar, I can also do that. Um, so I'm going to use these, the stage content as, um, as a direction for the digital heritage item I'm going to add with you. And I've quickly chosen um, this item from sheet 12, Language of the Birds. Um, so I'm going to go to this link and get the media item. Oh, that's big. Um, how do you right click? Yeah, we're on a Mac. So we're going to save this image as. <laughs> by the way, if you haven't chosen one yet, um, by all means, please do. Um, go ahead and choose an item. OK. And that's gone to my desktop, so that's great. Um, and then I'll exit out of here and go to sheet 12 where the metadata is. OK, so we have our title. I'm just going to copy the title right over. Thank you, Evernote. And select the media. So can you take a moment just to talk about the three ways you can add content here? Yeah. Um, so there's three ways that you can add content. If you have a stable web URL for your media, um, sometimes I like to use the URL of the media item. So um, if you have a content repository that you're using already, you can take 
the hosted URL and just paste it within the web thing, or you can source uh, web items from the internet to momentarily represent your items. The thing about um, uh, the thing about some, um, if you're using someone else's content, you you want to make sure that you have um, the rights to reuse the content because we are all Mukuru is all about. Um, rights, man not just content management, but rights management as well, which is why we have so many licensing and label options. Um, so we want to make sure that we're still being respectful to other people, um, but also that it's a stable URL. So um, these, all the images today are coming from Flickr. Um, and we used to recommend that you could, because Flickr is great, you can add up to a terabyte of images and it preserves all the metadata of them. Um, but it, it doesn't give you a stable, stable URL for your images. So that's why we're downloading the media and uploading it um, into the Mukudu software. Um, YouTube and Vimeo are really great for video files because it does keep a stable URL for your videos and you can adjust the privacy on YouTube and Vimeo as well. Um, and then the third option is going to um, the media library and from the media library you can access any of the files that you've uploaded previously to the site. And um, that's a particular area where we're doing a lot of work. Um, so, so stay tuned for some really great things happening at the library. Yes. Um, so we'll upload this image file. And I'm just going to do that by dragging and dropping. If you hover over the choose file link, you can just drop it. Or you can click the choose file, drink, file link to um, open up your finder or your my computer to find the directory file. I have no idea you could do that. That's too cool. Use Mooka to not do enough and, yeah. you know. If you, if you upload 10,000 items, it's all sorts of things you learn. <laughs> okay, so we'll go through this part really quickly because it's kind of just filling in the blanks. So we have this really great description that was written by the students. Then I'm going to drop into the description item. Um, traditional knowledge is um, you can provide um, a traditional, well, traditional knowledge is traditional knowledge. Um, no, it's an open field for you to express uh, your traditional knowledge on the content. And um, this this field kind of came out of um, sometimes there's a conflict in uh, the traditional uh, Dublin core description field versus your own personal knowledge, especially when you're working on collections that are accessioned into um, a public archive or something. So this is a separate description field where you can add maybe some more sacred knowledge about the item or um, a personal story about, about your experience with the content. Um, I have a cultural narrative as well. And the cultural narrative provides context for what's going on in your item. So uh, for our cultural narrative, we just have a quick history of North Beach, which is where this mural was um, is right now. And then um, we have our, our communities. So we have the Center for Digital Archaeology and Mukuru Moments and our cultural protocol of public. Uh, our category, we've set up microhistory and photography. And then our keywords. Let me see what I have set up as the keywords. So the keywords, you can add any keyword at any time. Um, so even though I want to make sure that these are separate, actually, North Beach, San Francisco, and Webinar. And then some of the standard um, metadata fields that we have. And these are Dublin core fields for now. Um, we recognize that not every um, metadata set is always going to be perfect for, um, for your content. Um, but since this is a freestanding site, it's also very flexible. So you can interpret 
the metadata fields however you wish. Um, we just, for all the archivists and librarians out there, we wanted to have a set of standardized um, items. So I'm going to write my name as a contributor since I contributed to the advent of this object. And let's finish this up. Uh, date. Uh, format. We don't have format. I'm sorry. Yeah, for, format. Um, format's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> um, identifier. So this is the original file name. Um, latitude and longitude is really cool, but that's farther down. We'll do a copyright. Um, and we have a rights field, but we also have some licensing options for you to select farther down the line. Um, and then let's do our latitude, our longitude. Our location description. And then finally, um, they're all licensed under the Attribution Non-Commercial International License. Um, they were actually licensed under 3.0, but right now we have 4.0 um, on Mukadu Premier. Uh, Non-commercial. All right. Now the magic. Do, 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 do. And here we have it. Sure. And the question uh, question came out, could you add a city for location? You can add the location description. Um, you can really add anything that helps to define the the, the locality um, information. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's other ways that it's been defined, uh, what's called temporal coverage. And you'll see that we actually add, right in the very description itself, a much more robust um, and clear um, description of, of, of things. Um, Currently, uh, I think uh, what Richard's asking a question about longitude and latitude, and I think what you're asking is what we would, what would be called a reverse lookup, where you can just put in the friendly name of something and then have it have it map that, and that's a that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Currently not available, but it's a great idea. Right now, I can show you a tip of how I do that. Um, I go to maps.google.com, and you can look up a location. Um, yeah. Okay, this is where we are right now. We're at Larkspur Landing Circle. And if I wanted to get more specific and find the actual coordinates, I can right click on any any coordinate of the map and click on what's here. And when you click on what's here, here we go. Oh, there it is. Uh, you get a nice set of coordinates right there. So I could really click on, it doesn't even need to be in Google Google Maps' radar, you can click on any coordinate across the globe and say what's here and um, find the exact coordinates of that location. So that's that's a tool that I use, um, and it would be really nice to have that in Mukadu. OK, so I think that we're going to go on to any questions and also open it up for everyone to add their own digital heritage items. Right, so uh, we'll be monitoring questions, but what we'd like you to do is if you take a look um, in the um, in the course materials on the materials tab, you'll, ha you'll see that there is a link to this um, spreadsheet and we'll go ahead and put that also into um, the chat for you again. And you'll go to the list items tab and we'll see that we have Jennifer who picked the first one, Daniel, Helen, Claire, Nathan. So if you haven't chosen one of these items yet and you'd like to, and you'd like to play along, by all means, add it here. And then um, what, we'll want to, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look and see as, as you're adding these items over the next couple of minutes, anyone who's willing to, um, to share a screen, by all means, let us know. And what we'll do is um, switch the screen over uh, to yours and we can watch that happening uh, live, we can also, um, if you just let us know that you've added it, then um, 
and you can paste the, the URL of the item you've added, then we will um, we can also go and take a look at it. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. So for one, one thing we'll do, we've done this in other trainings is um, while you're hopefully going through that spreadsheet and just following along with what Kelly just did, um, if I just hit refresh on browse, we should start to see items appearing. So, so far we have ours and, uh, and hopefully we'll have yours. Um, so are there any, any questions so far about how to, how to play along with this, uh, adding the items? Um, remember, you don't have to add communities, cultural protocols, or categories currently, um, given you know, time for this particular webinar. Um, so it's just adding the, the DH item itself. Jennifer asks, um, you, you can go ahead and, and pick um, one. Um, um, it's actually already um, listed in the... There, yeah, that's true. If you're in as a demo user, um, we'll have to see if she has access. As a demo user, will she have access to these communities? Yes. Yeah, you should. You In fact, it's a great question. You will still have access to those communities because both of those communities have been marked with an open protocol. Mm -hmm. Right? Am I got that right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So... Great question, Jennifer. By all means, just go ahead and add uh, the communities that are, that are marked um, attributed to your particular item. Let's see, I want to see. Here we go. And w when you, if you finish adding an item, um, if just um, if you can add it, just Shout out with a text. That would be great, too. Uh, we'll, we'll keep taking a look here and seeing how we're doing. I see on list items now. A um, couple of you still have the opportunity to go ahead and add. And I would say just go ahead and grab one. We also will point out it's really OK. This is all demo content. So if you add, if two people grab the same item, that's also totally OK. You guys have Lo Lotus, Amy, and Amar are all going to hang out on the wooden rocking chair and City Lights, which is a personal favorite. So I get why that one's popular. Oh, look. Hey, look at that. You see a uh, view from the Bay Bridge of Alcatraz Island has been added. And if you get stuck, the whole point of getting stuck is to say you got stuck and you need help, and we're that's what we're here for is to help you out. Beautiful. That's nice job, Claire. A shout out to Claire. She is. It's like 5 a.m. in yes. New Zealand right now. Thank, Thank you, you so much <laughs> for showing up at five o'clock in the morning, New Zealand time. Uh, we will be doing um, our webinars a little bit later in the day. <laughs> I think. Uh, going forward, um, probably closer to noon. <laughs> Let's go back to browse. All right. Well, while you're while you're plugging away, um, you do do you want to start trying to build out the collection item? Sure. So for those of you who are, who are just observing um, as well, um, good morning, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Claire. Yeah, good morning to you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, Kelly's going to start building out um, something. W w it's not so much a fix, but it's a different way, a different approach to an item. And yeah. it works really well. So we're going to build out with what, what, what Kelly has basically done a workaround in a current version of the software called a collection item. So she's going to go ahead and start getting that built. Um, while you keep adding other items, so go ahead. Okay. So when I'm um, in the new version, we will have a specific content item called a collection available. Um, but for now, I'm just going to create a digital heritage item to represent a collection of items. So um, today's collection will be um, a webinar season two episode. Two. Oh, so, sorry, season one. <laughs> episode two. Um, and 
Um, a resource that we provided um, through through the resources, you can see the materials tab, is a link to Jennifer O'Neill's um, presentation at the Sustainable Heritage Network of um, Best Practices and Workflows. Um, so if you're new to archiving um, and make, creating collections of physical items, or even um, it overflows to if things are born digital, um, learning about um, what is a series, what is a collection, how to write a provenance, that's a really great resource that Jennifer O'Neill and the Sustainable Heritage Network have um, provided right on the web. Um, and if you go to the sustainableheritagenetwork.org, um, there are a lot of other resources available if you're new to archiving best practices or digitization best practices. So just a shout out there. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> you go ahead and put a zero in there. Oh, thank you. Okay. So, for my zeros. so for my collection, and I'm going to actually just write a reminder that this is a collection because that's what I do. Um, and then I'm just going to write a general description. Um, this content was created for the webinar, not for, um, sorry. <laughs> So while she's typing, we'll point point out in, in case you haven't figured this out. This is um, adding single items is um, is a challenge, and Jennifer actually talks about that the amount of effort to put in single items. But one of the great findings we've had with Mukadu is that a single item could be one of the most precious things that exists. It could be the last recording of uh, of, a, of a person within a community. It could be um, it could be it could be a very valuable thing. Um, entering information in by hand, as we're doing here, is only one way of getting content into Mukadu. Um, we'll be demoing um, in a future webinar um, the batch process, which is typically how we're doing things, adding items by the tens, hundreds, or thousands um, at a time. So um, you can also you also will note that the, the the greatest amount of effort isn't really so much in um, in this particular part, but in, in actually getting the metadata and the media um, ready to be added. So that's that's a, the initial curation effort that's actually a lot of challenge. And uh, another point is that she's adding certain stuff right now, but it's malleable. She can always go back and make more changes later um, and, and make the descriptions much more um, you know, thick and rich. All right, and then I've actually created a category called collection so that all of my collections are compiled into one category. And that's how I created this tab for the categories. Um, so since this is just a collection, I'm not going to add any of our, our digital heritage specific categories. I'm just going to add the collection category. Um, and for now, we'll leave it there. Um, now relating the items is um, another thing. And so I'm going to go to a different tab to see what items that we actually have available right now. Do, 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 do. Wonderful. All okay, right. so we see we have a lot of items. So I'm just going to start typing in the title of these items um, into my Digital Heritage Related Items field. And it pulls the item right up. And I can add as many or as few items as I want to. So I'll keep on working on this in the background. So, so related items is a really cool thing. And it's done, as you can see, it's, it's pulling together each di di digital heritage item from, uh, from the collection and just by typing a couple of, um, of characters. And, um, and then it does a search. And if you don't know the full title, you can just type a couple of letters and it will find it for you. Yeah. 
I spelled graffiti wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just do a couple more for now. We'll finish this up after the, the webinar. There you go. Uh, another thing that's nice is if a title does change, the relationship doesn't. Relationship is based on what's called the unique ID that's attached to the item. So if we go back and where it says sheet 10, if we decide to take that out and have it just be view of the Bay Bridge, it won't, it won't break the relationship, which is fantastic. Look at that. Okay. And I'm gonna edit this and do a couple more things. I'm going to select a media item. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll just re-upload my because I'm a demo user, I actually can't access the media library from this, which is a good thing. <laughs> So I'm going to create a duplicate file. Um, yeah, if you come back to Premiere tomorrow, you'll see this will have completely tricked this thing out so that it has um, a really nice graphic and uh, it's been the item's been a bit more curated. And we can move the related items around um, depending on how we want to focus on um, the more or less important part. Not important, but just um, something personal like, choice. yeah, personal choice or series. If you have a series that needs to be displayed in a certain order, you can drag and drop those. So here we have it. Awesome. Well done. Um, bravo to the, to the whole team here. And again, if you, if you, we're going to keep watching, um, items being added, um, path the garden center just got added. Awesome. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, let's take a look at, um, the rocking chair. <laughs> so you can see we have, uh, this is beautiful. Um, we have the keywords here. And for those that, that added the keyword like this, we can even see all the items that are part of that particular webinar. So that's another facet, another way of seeing the content, um, which is really great. And anything that's attached to San Francisco um, on, on keywords will be here, etc. So this is really getting to the whole power of of Mugadu. And as you see, we have traditional knowledge filled in here. Um, this is just uh, an excerpt about City Lights and the Poet's Chair uh, in a blog from the internet. Um, and there's also cultural narrative about the actual bookstore. So, Right. And as a logged in user, then you could add comments. And this is a way we could start having comment streams um, available on particular items, which has been one of the most interesting and exciting use cases for, for Mukadu. So to go back through the six C's, um, we've created communities, uh, cultural protocols, and categories. Those are our building blocks. They lay the foundation for what will become content. And um, the content can be curated through collections or keywords. Um, they can also be curated through communities and categories if you choose to allow your users to view, um, to be able to browse content according to that view. So. Great, great job. Um, and so we've done that bit. And so um, we're gonna take a look at the poll in a second and hopefully, um, and, and we've already taken a sneak peek. So we have a kind of a sense of, of what you're interested in, which is great. But at this point, are there other questions you, or, or comments about the experience of adding content uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, anything you want to say in terms of your own experiences of adding um, content, if you've been working with Premiere or your own sites. So just feel free to type anything you want into the um, text box. That would be absolutely fantastic. Or you can, we can open the speakers too if you sure. just want to talk. We can also, yeah, we'd be happy to do that. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. The only reason we, we don't have the audio going uh, is sometimes it can become a bit like being in a submarine, but we'll we'll give it a sh we'll give it a try here. Um, okay. And that will be why we'll pick on anyone who wants to talk. By all means, just let us know. That's what we expected. In, in our second or third or fifth technology lives, we might try to build another version of go to training. Um, Okay, so we have a couple questions. 
Can you quickly show again how you would start with creating an overall collection that you would then add related items? Okay. <laughs> so that's fair. I mean, we were <laughs> Jennifer was actually doing her homework while we were um, demoing it at the same time. So that's that we will we'll take we'll take a, a moment to right now to go over that collection. You can find it right under collections and walk you back through that. All right. So right now, um, collections to create a collection. I actually just go and add a digital heritage item um, because we don't have a specific content type called collection. Um, but uh, we realize that by adding a single digital item, digital heritage item, which could represent a collection, we are actually creating a, a, what would be very similar to what we would like to have as a collection. So it's I, cre I press create a digital heritage item. I have a category called collection. And then um, on any digital heritage item, I can curate any uh, any related content. So I would add every item that would be in this collection if it was an actual collection. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great concept. And I mean, a little more advanced way of saying this is we'd be worthy of its own hour long session mm -hmm. is is the actual workflow for conceptualizing collections. And again, we would really encourage folks to take a look at the SHN at the archival best practices, because it really begins, uh, you know, in, in more kind of traditional ways of looking at digital library collections and series. Mm -hmm. Mukadu really does is really focused on the individual item, mm -hmm. as opposed to as opposed to the collection level currently. But on our 2.0, mm -hmm. we, we, we plan to have a collection of content type um, specifically. So we really are using um, the, the Mukadu um, individual DH item to be a collection. But one of the things that's really amazing, however, is that any item can have these related items to it, uh, mm -hmm. which is really, really cool. Um, no, you're great. That's, this is actually one of the hottest topics, I'll tell you. Uh, Nathan asks about um, how users are added to communities, and is that a topic for a later webinar? And specifically asked us not to do that because it, it is, um, it's actually quite um, easy to add people to a community. Um, and uh, Kelly can actually demo that right now. So um, if you have created a, use, a community, um, you can edit that community and add users to it. So the way, since I've created this community, um, I'm the ad, I'm technically by default the admin of this community. So I can go and go to the group function for this community and click on add people. And when I click on add people, I can type in any name, um, any username in the system. So right now I'm just adding myself. And when I click add users, it gives me a confirmation that I've been added to the group and brings me back to this page in case I want to add more people to the group. And then to view any users, I can go back to my community and right at the bottom of the page, I can see the Archeo Center for Digital Archaeology group members are Kelly S and Demo. And Lotus asks if the community is public do you need to add users? And, and this is a really great question. First of all, the way that um, th through years of doing, you know, of, uh, of working with communities, the concept of public isn't, isn't a, of itself actually a protocol. And um, so we have, um, in the sense that it is a way of sharing. So the default in Mukadu isn't to have everything be um, open to the world unless there's a decision making process there. But the, the short answer to your question is if it's marked as open, you don't have to be a member to see the content that's been attributed to uh, quote public in this case. You could add, you could also in fact have a could have a community called community and it could also be marked as open and you would not have to be a member of it to see that. But what's really awesome is that if at some point a particular protocol or a particular community wants to either open up or more um, or more tightly control content, um, that can easily be done. And we've mm -hmm. had plenty of real world examples of that. Um, run one real quick one, I know we're getting close to time, but I'll just say was we had some content that was, was 
was in a it was in a uh, a website a Mukadu website that was not ready to be seen by the entire world, and um, and all the things had been done right by the the group that was running the site, but they were e very easily able to just change a single protocol and then um, restrict that content until more um, deliberations could be done within the community. So that's really the power of the whole process in Bukadu. Okay, I'm looking at the clock and I'm going to, you can keep asking questions by all means, please do, because that's, I believe, the very next slide. So if there are any last questions, I want to um, take a look at um, the poll. So uh, thank you very much. Um, we, we learned, we're learning about how um, Go to training works, and one of the things we learned is if you um, open a poll, you have to close a poll in order to move forward. So, um, uh, about eighty-three percent of those who joined the call today were able to get on the on the poll, and um, the no one had any questions about communities. Um, Forty percent had questions about getting started, and I believe I can share results here. Let me see if this will work. Da da. So there you go. So um, that's um, what we know. And so cultural protocols can continue to be the rising star of, of confusion. So hopefully we began to talk about that. And we certainly would like that to be a topic of a complete uh, training. We are also doing what we call Mukadu Moments, which are three to five minute videos specifically on a topic. We also at support.mukadu.org, we have um, written up articles specifically about cultural protocols. Um, but the thing that's interesting about protocols is they are always a work in progress. They are something that we're trying to have Mukadu respond to uh, effectively with a changing idea about, uh, about these. So we're going to have to wrap it here. And we're going to, again, thank you so much. This has been a um, spectacular um, grouping. We're, the next webinar will be, um, we're going to have live here in our CODA studios here, Kim, Kristen, and Alex Merrill from Washington State. Um, who will be talking about the Plato People's Web Portal, the various projects that are happening. Um, it will be a great opportunity for you to ask any questions. Kim has a lot of expertise also on uh, traditional knowledge and sharing. Um, so that will be a really great thing. It'll be more of a, more of a, you know, kind of in studio sitting around having coffee kind of thing. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we really hope you'll join for that. And with that, we would like to say thank you and any questions you have or thoughts, by all means, um, uh, please send them to support at mukadu.org. And when you, thank you very much to everyone. And when you, um, when you exit from the webinar, we would love you to take, it's a little tiny three question uh, survey that we put together um, that has to do with how we did today and what we can do to make things better for you guys. Great, great. Thank you for the great notes, guys. Um, and anything you'd else you'd like us to do to help make your experience mukaduing a better one. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank and you. We will um, see you soon.